you are pre-Rogan. So you're old, old school. Yeah. Old you school. saw something. And I, I'm really curious, like as a mayor, a former mayor in New Hampshire, well networked in, I'm guessing other candidates came and, and you met with them and, you know, you got to know them. And then you ended up supporting this, at that time, like the longest, one of the longest of long shots. Yeah. Right? Like he wasn't yeah. number six at that time. He was not. <laughs> he was so not. So like, what, what are your, what did your friends and your wife, like, what did people say when you're like, hey, I'm going to get behind this Andrew Yang guy? It's a good question. Yeah. And he, first, you know, I've been around this stuff my whole life in New Hampshire. I mean, even as a 10 year old, I was standing in a snowstorm holding a sign for Gary Hart the day that he came out of nowhere and beat a former vice president to blow out the New Hampshire primary, mm. perhaps a prediction for next year as well, by the way. Nice. Um, and, um, I like the underdog, first of all. I'm drawn to people that come from the outside uh, because I think that's where big change occurs and we need some big change right now. So mm -hmm. my DNA is to give uh, maybe more of a listen or a look to somebody in Andrew's position than the average uh, activist or politician or office holder that often as they get more into the political system, often uh, politicians become safer Mm -hmm. They become more small C conservative. Yeah. Uh, and uh, because they feel they have a reputation or something that they have to uphold. Yeah. And that if you go with, and I'm not disrespecting these other candidates, if you go with Joe Biden or you go with Bernie or you go with Harris or Warren, there's an element of no one's ever going to say to you ever, what were you thinking? They, yeah. they may disagree with you, but they're yeah. never going to say that is outside the box to a place that's uncomfortable. When I signed on with Andrew, and I had the benefit as a New Hampshireite to have coffee with him one-on-one. -on -one. Mm -hmm. I took him snowmobiling in Bartlett, New Hampshire. We, uh, I stayed with him and the team at an Airbnb as I traveled with them in northern New Hampshire. Uh, that's not an opportunity most Americans get to really kick the tires on a presidential candidate. So I have that unique advantage. But I just listening to him, mm -hmm. reading the material, watching early videos, watching him when the camera wasn't on, Mm -hmm. uh, he has extraordinary intelligence. Uh, I think he's um, highly ethical. He, is, he has his eye a generation ahead, but understands that we don't have a generation to get to that place. Mm -hmm. uh, the decisions we make now will impact 20 years from now. He communicates that in a way that's completely different from any other presidential candidate. And I did get to spend a lot of time with many of the other candidates, big names, smaller names, most of them. Mm -hmm. And I uh, have great respect for the field. But we, if we're going to be Donald Trump, the idea that we would pick somebody with a long Washington-centric resume, mm -hmm. Donald Trump's greatest advantage is that despite being president for almost three years, he is still perceived as an outsider, yeah. which is very odd. So if you pick somebody who would be caricatured easily as an insider, you're giving Donald Trump his greatest strength, you're, you're giving him that. If you pick somebody who is relatively old in the field, you're taking something that should be a disadvantage to Donald Trump because he's had some verbal stumbles, there's mm -hmm. some uh, genuine questions about um, his acuity, I'm trying to be you know, uh, polite about it. Yeah. But if you pick somebody who is the same age or older and that may be open in at least one case to some of the same concerns, mm -hmm. you're also taking that off the table. So to me, the best thing to beat an outsider who creates problems is not an insider. It's an outsider who solves problems. Uh, Carl Rove of the George W. Bush days has a saying, mm -hmm. what's mine is mine and what's yours we'll discuss. <laughs> and, and I like that because we, I feel like we as Democrats, we have so many winning arguments on policy that can win back blue collar America, as well as keep those that are maybe at the higher income, higher education levels, uh, largely on the coast where we're, we're doing well right now. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I want to, I want to take back the things that Donald Trump is claiming as his, but are not like entrepreneurship mm -hmm. and uh, acumen about the private sector and the clear perspective of an outsider versus an insider, mm -hmm. uh, dynamism and energy. Andrew had all these things. And the more time I spent with him, I saw somebody with a unique combination of once in a generation opportunity and skill set 
uh, that could do amazing things for this country I love. And there you go.